Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? In about 10 minutes, President Obama will address the Congress and the nation on the State of the Union. Tonight, what is the State of our Union? The State of the Union is not good. For starters, this is not a union any longer. When the Constitution was written and the phrase State of the Union was first used, the United States was a union of independent states. They had real sovereignty. They were not subject to the federal government. The feds didn't tell them what to do. And you could vote with your feet by effectively moving from a highly taxed and overregulated state to a low tax and freedom oriented state. Today, the states are substantially the same because they are all subject to the feds. Today, the feds are ordering all states to provide health care insurance to those who cannot afford it. And if any state declines to do so, the feds will do it for them and bill them for it or deduct the cost of it from money the feds have already committed to them. Today, the feds control the speed limits on state and street signs on state-owned roads, the standards for advancement of students in state-owned schools, the conditions for construction of building on state-owned real estate, and the landing rights and movement of passengers at state-owned airports. Today, the list of what the states have not delegated to the feds in the Constitution, but is regulated by the feds anyway, is almost endless. From the wages the states pay to their own employees to the safety procedures the states must follow on their own properties, the bullies in Washington rule. The federal government also thinks it can regulate any personal behavior, tax any private event, pay any welfare bill, borrow or print any money, any amount of money, no matter what the Constitution says. Even though the president has taken an oath to uphold the Constitution, Neither our current president nor any president in the past 100 years has kept the federal government within the confines of the Constitution. Tonight will be no exception. Tonight, President Obama will offer to spend tax dollars and print cash in order to enhance your prosperity. This won't work, and he knows it. Think about it. If printing huge amounts of cash and spending it on pet projects actually enhanced prosperity, then we could all become wealthy if the feds just gave cash away. Everyone knows that won't work. America, the president believes that we exist for the government rather than that the government exists for us. He believes that the feds have a greater claim to your property and to your income than you do. He truly believes that you work for the government rather than that the government works for you. He thinks that by centrally planning and politically directing the economy, by taking much of your money away from you and giving it away in your name, we will somehow all benefit. He thinks that higher taxes will bring in more revenue and that raising taxes on the most productive in America will make the rest of us more prosperous. He rejects the central tenet of the Declaration of Independence, that we can each pursue happiness as we wish and that the pursuit of happiness essentially means that the government should stay out of our bank books and out of our bedrooms and out of our basements. America, prosperity comes from hard work, saving money, investment and risk, free choices, low taxes, and a free market. It does not come from the government. There is not a single example in all of history in which a centrally planned economy has produced more long-term growth and prosperity for more people than the free market has. But the president, along with his big government friends in both parties, is more interested in staying in power and staying in control than in defending your freedoms. So in a few minutes, the president will beat up on the successful in the name of leveling the playing field and in the name of everyone playing by the same rules. As soon as he uses that phrase, everyone plays by the same rules, I want you to recall that when he says it, he doesn't mean it. He wants different rules for different folks. He wants lower taxes for his friends and higher taxes for his adversaries. He's happy with 43 million Americans living on food stamps and dependent on the government. He's glad that half the country pays no federal income taxes. And he believes that when federal bureaucrats get to invest your tax dollars for you, somehow that will produce more prosperity than if you got to invest that cash on your own. But if he really cared about your jobs and prosperity, he would shut down the huge chunk of the federal government that is not even arguably justified by the Constitution. And he'd stop spending money that the feds don't have. He'd recognize and defend your personal freedoms. And by getting out of the way, he'd permit the engine of the free market to create jobs. But then 
He couldn't control the jobs and he couldn't control you. To this president, being in government is not about defending personal freedom.